Hey everybody, welcome to Ellis Mowers. I appreciate y'all watching as always. Y'all seen this mower on the channel a couple times before. This is a Craftsman, an MTD Craftsman that I've done some work to over the past couple of years. And uh, I'm realizing, I guess after you do a bunch of them, you learn on some things. Um, the guy who had this uh, stayed in touch with the past couple of years and had to do a couple of repairs on it. And ultimately ended up replacing his mower with the Craftsman. I wanted to get this thing back and either figure out what I wanted to do with it or get it right. And after I just worked on this Troy Built Bronco that y'all saw on the channel, it's basically a carbon copy of this mower. Um, I figured that I did a bunch of work on that Bronco to get it back, that I'm gonna attempt to get this back going right again. I made a couple of mistakes on this one. Um, but I'm gonna see what I can do in order to get it running and driving reliably. The big issue is the transmission, and I don't think I put it all back on right. So that's what I plan to do. I have a couple of other things that I need to do, the deck and whatnot. But we're gonna to try to get this back going again and figure out you know, if we can get it to where it'll run and cut reliably again. It's been doing things like eating belts and everything so um like i said a couple years of experience helps out a lot when it comes to things like this so uh, we're gonna hopefully after two years get this craftsman right again we're gonna do some drive belts i've got to do a little bit of work on uh on the transmission mostly that pivot linkage uh, because i was dumb and i cut off the linkage uh, to the brake because I thought that was my issue a while back and it wasn't so let's go ahead and get started on this um, we'll see what we can get ourselves into I do think I need to put a, um, a push rod in the engine as well so we've got quite a few things to get taken care of on this it's not terribly hard things but things that we need to get done Again, if you have any questions about this video, feel free to reach out to me, ellis at ellismowers.com or at ellismowers09 on Instagram and Facebook. Again, I have affiliate links down below as well if you're looking to buy any products that are related to small engines or automotive stuff. Get a little discount if you look at those and uh, buy, from, buy from them. Let's go ahead and get started. I'll show you what all I think we need to do on this and uh, we'll get on cruising with it. All right, so this has been one of my biggest learning experience mowers that I've had in a, uh, on the channel, really, and uh, for good reason. Um, it came in with a bad compression release. I put another one in that didn't work. It turned out the compression release was bad, but instead of replacing the compression release again, I put a 14 and a half horsepower Briggs overhead valve on it, which is leaking oil at the dipstick tube. But it runs okay. It does need an intake push rod because it's about wore out. Because I had to do a head gasket on this a while back. And figured that, or found that out. And uh, so yeah, we had all kinds of stuff going on. Um, deck wise, the return spring's a little bit weird. It's, it's a 46 inch deck. It's actually nice to have a 46 inch deck. But what I have learned, I have a deck in the back. And I have learned that this is upside down. So I need to turn this up back the other way because when I do that, the spring kind of binds up on this linkage and it doesn't work very well for the return spring. You can see that this belt is pretty trashed. Um, gosh, it might still work though. It, we're missing a left hand um, pulley housing here. So the belt does try and slip off when you turn it off. I think these... Yeah, these have little pins inside of them that help keep the belt on, so um, they're, they are essential to have on this. Uh, might be able to retrofit one, I doubt it, because I think these spindles are a little bit bigger. In order to change this over, all I have to do is take, I gotta take this off and then take, pull the brake back, take the cotter pin off, pull this out, pull it out of this groove, turn it around, and put it back in. It's not that difficult, probably do it off camera hook the spring back down here to the bottom, get all this junk off the deck, it's, it'll be good to go. 
Um, in terms of the drive belts, I'm kicking myself for what I ended up doing on this. But what I did was I thought this whole brake mechanism was causing issues with the drive belts on this. Turns out I just put crappy drive belts on. Again, me trying to do aftermarket drive belts and what happens? I get burned, I get screwed. So, um, I think I put it on backwards anyways. No, I didn't put it on backwards, Never mind. But, uh, yeah, so I get screwed again. So I'm gonna be doing a drive belt job. I just did that on the Troy belt, so I'm not gonna worry about showing it. Like I said, we got oil leaks on oil leaks down here. And I think it mostly stems from this, uh, I think it mostly stems from that dipstick tube. And I think if I put an O-ring or two in that, and that should fix that. Um, oh gosh, what else? We got a blade cable, that's fairly new. Steering's good. I don't, I don't know what could compelled me to just remove this but that also acts as a belt guide this little there's supposed to be a little piece that goes right here that acts as a belt guide and i just decided hey let's just remove it so i did i need to put something here so that i can get by with it now if i put the proper belts on but i do need to uh i do need to put something in between the pulley and here and then also see if i can get this to where it doesn't have as much play in it and if I do that, I think we're going to be okay. Um, but yeah, dumb decisions. But it's not all is lost here. Just the biggest thing is the drive belts are wrong. And they don't really line up very well. Oh, they kind of line up okay. They do now anyways. They didn't earlier. I think I've got this thing on the wrong way too. So that doesn't help. <laughs> i got all kinds of problems here. So that's what's going on. Um, it does start and run. Although I do need to put that intake push rod on. So I'm gonna go ahead and do those two things. Y'all seen this mower on the channel and I just wanted to share this with y'all before I did it. Pulleys are good. That one's a little, got a little play in it, but that's all right. And uh, I think that's it. So let me go ahead and do those things off camera. Y'all saw the drive belts already on that Troy built Bronco. I put an organ drive belt on the back of this, so that's actually an OE, well not OEM, but one that'll stay on there, luckily, because I don't have a back drive belt, I have a front drive belt. And uh, yeah, so uh, let me go ahead and take care of this, and I'll show you the new drive belt and all that good stuff, and see what I end up doing with the deck and with, the, with those items that are missing on the pulley and whatnot, so. All right guys, this is your daily reminder use oem belts on these very drive transmissions especially the bottom belt and especially for these broncos because if you look you see the difference in thickness right there you would think oh it's just maybe like an eighth of an inch that's not gonna do anything it does trust me it's like the third one i've had to do that i've done aftermarket belts for and it's done this mess to me so this is going in the trash because it's no good for anything but um, we're gonna put that on. Let me show you the deck real quick. I do need to sharpen the blades on the deck. And you, uh, I turned this over like I told you. I ended up taking the bolt out instead of the little cotter pin because the, it, the um, end of it had been messed up. So I just took the bolt out, redid it. We've got good I thought we had good tension or pulley action. I think we do. Yeah, there we go. And the return spring is working good again. Cleaned off the deck some. Um, so really, I think all I need to do is maybe source a belt for this thing and a uh, um, cover for this side. Because these... Uh, these covers act as guards and if you're missing them like it seems like all these mtds that i get you got to have something so um that's what we got anyways let me put that drive belt back on um fairly easy if you don't have to replace the top one because all you have to do is take one pulley off the bottom the crank pulley and then 
basically just work everything around after you take that spring off. I know that's extremely dark in there, but I just did this last video, so I'm not really concerned about, or not as concerned about that. Anyways, let me t let me take care of this and um, see if we can at least get this thing driving tonight. All right, guys, I'm got, I want to show you what I ended up doing. I got the mower in neutral, and it takes advantage that I don't have the brake on here because I can test it out. You can kind of see what it's doing. So we've got it on all the pulleys. As you can see, and the best way I can figure out is that it Obviously this belt right here, it pulls the bear drive pulley back and then it rests on the outside of that little uh, guide right there because if it doesn't, it just flops around. The only thing I can think of is that it's, it's kind of skirting the bottom of the pulley right here. I put a little plate as a guard so that it doesn't fall off of that pulley and then I put this um, old clutch something to a push mower on here so that it doesn't try and slip off in between the two pulleys. It seems it seems okay. I haven't seen where it's trying to wear the belt funny or anything yet so it's just going to take a little bit of time for me to see if um that will work or not but we will see i think i'm gonna throw the deck back on before i go in and just see if it'll cut with the way that i've got it routed now all right guys well i cleaned her up and man i'm almost in a predicament now and i'll tell you why because i have a 14 and a half in this i have everything pos that i need to make this work to have it look original again that's my dilemma you can see that i've cleaned the mower up it actually save for the headlights it cleans up really nicely actually and what i'm gonna do i've already decided that i think i've already told you here on the video i'm gonna fix i'm gonna fix this right this time I've already fixed the drive belts, as you can see. That is missing the brake, but the brake still works. It, the only thing that does is it pops it into neutral whenever you hit that brake. That's the only thing that that little lever that I cut off did in that previous video that I had this. And it also kept the belt alignment right, but I've fixed that as well. The deck's in good shape. Need to sharpen the blades. This engine, either way, I've got to take the valve cover off and go into it to replace a push rod, which isn't that big of a deal. I put another O-ring here around the, uh, the seal here on the dipstick, so hopefully I don't have to worry about that leaking anymore. Hopefully. Um, we'll see, though. Um... Steering's a little loose. I think I need to put a bolt in the frame over. Oh, the frame's cracked. Actually, the dash bezel's cracked over here, so that's not going to happen. But it still does just fine. I'm toying with it. I'll show you what I got. So I've got the engine co old engine cover on sitting on the roof here. I don't have an air filter cover for it though, and that was one of the biggest things that I was gonna have to get. So we'll see what we'll see what materializes. I got something that may be in the works here. And I've got a couple of connections that I can reach out to. But in my shed over there, I've actually got eh, come take a walk with me. Why not? Let's unlock the shed and give you a look. Cause I really one thing I'm trying to do on this channel is to get th do things right. I've I've been rigging mess up for years, and I want to get it. I want to make it so that I'm a little bit more 
professional here. So let's come into the shed and take a look at what I've got. Hopefully there's enough light in here for y'all to see. This is like engine central back here for me. Um, I've got quite a bit of stuff. So I have two engine blocks actually that well, one of them's good one of them's ready to go this one right here is ready to go it's just missing a head and uh which i've got a head two heads right here to, that are ready to rock and roll so this one might as long as i have the correct flywheel and i'm not sure if i do or not back here but i do have one off of another mower that would work so I could take this engine block, theoretically, throw a head on it, a couple of push rods, and, I mean, I think I'll be good to go, honestly. Um, this is the original block that came on this engine. We've got the coil sitting over there. Uh, I think, it, is, that a, is that a coil? That's a coil. Oh, that's a Briggs, um, shoot, that's a twin cylinder coil. I know I've got a single cylinder, cylinder coil sitting around here somewhere. I just got to find it. But there's one right. It is right there. So I've got a flywheel here. It's missing a magnet, but I've got another flywheel on a 16 horse Briggs. There's my coil right there. Boom. There's some push rods valve cover head lifters i mean i got it all up in here so this is the engine that i put on a d110 john deere that ended up being a flywheel key and i thought it was bad and i thought it, the whole engine was bad and so i ended up putting it on a uh ended up taking it off and putting him another engine on his mower kept that but that's the block that originally came with this and I've got the engine cover saved for the air filter cover, and I'm, if I have the right connections, I might be able to obtain the air filter cover fairly easily. So we'll see. Um, of all the mowers I have here, I do not have an air filter cover for that thing, which is crazy. But I also can cobble together. Like, it won't take me much to put it on there. Because this, this block design is a little bit different. And I've got this blown engine right here as well that i believe i could take the well there's a coil on that you can see it's blown it's actually blown out the side of the block on this side right there somewhere and you see this is a bunch of parts right here including the head and all that stuff so i could take the head and all that mess off of this and be ready to rock and roll so i have a lot of options and this is the proper valve cover and all that mess that goes on this or the proper flywheel and stuff i think it's the offset flywheel there's one that's like 90 degrees offset and one of them that's straight up and down i've got one of each so i'm good in whatever aspect that i do i'm just throwing out things guys i really would like i said i'm trying to make it look a little bit more professional i think that it is detracting from the value of the mower if i sell it with this engine on it because 14 and a half horsepower and 46 inch deck a lot of people are gonna think that's underpowered if i can at least get an engine that looks like that's the newer style briggs and has the 21 and has the proper has the proper engine cover to match this i think i can probably pull another hundred dollars out of this this engine right here can be readily put on basically anything so like i've got what in the world have I got here? This one right here needs a governor. So I could just swap out the engines. Swap out the 14 and a half. Because this has got to come off anyways, you know. Throw a push rod in it and be done. I can put it in that frame right there. which I'll, Then I would just have to put a transmission and a deck on. And it would be good to go. I've got both of those around here, I think. I can make it work, that's for sure. I got a lot of fun to do. This is more of an aside, but thinking out loud, this is my thought process sometimes. It's like, well, I've got this engine. It runs, drives, 
Mose, but it's fairly underpowered for what I'm doing here. If it was a 42 inch deck, I'd say leave it, but that, that four extra inches of deck can really make an impact because you are cutting that much more grass on each pass. And I have, ever since I've fixed this mower, it's felt like it's been down on power as opposed to like a 21. It's like a six horsepower, six and a half horsepower difference. It probably is. Anyways, that's my aside. We'll figure out what we're gonna do. But I've already shown you basically everything I want to on this mower apart otherwise. Because I've rebuilt tons of engines on this thing or tons of engines on this channel so i think i'll spare you all the process of that if i remember i'll put a link in the description to an engine rebuild that i did to kind of show you how how to do it so basically all i need to do is an engine cover or a spindle cover here a belt and a couple other items uh the little guide thing that goes under the spindle cover and uh at that point that's about it then we should be ready to cut some cut and then do we put another engine on this thing that's the question we'll find out here in the next clip probably all right we are many many days later from the last clip however i got all the parts in to hopefully put this thing back right again i've started with the deck so far what i've done with the deck is i've put an oem deck belt on it from rotary and i also have gotten the this side of the guard and also a little piece these actually have little pieces that go inside this plastic guard so make sure you get that and this this that together was almost forty dollars but <clears throat> that's what I needed and I'm gonna try I'm trying my best to do this right because I would like for this thing to leave and have a good life I think it deserves a good life 46 inch deck to a little bit more desirable brings a little bit more money than a 42 so you see it's got a little bit of rust on it but no like holes or anything like that um we're gonna put this deck back on i think i'm done with everything except sharpening the blades which i can do off offline one thing i in, am interested in is i don't know if this bracket right here is actually bent or if it's like supposed to be like that so if we have an issue where hmm maybe this is supposed to I don't know because it's kind of trying to bend back and bend forward and I don't know if that's supposed to be something down there that might be I bet that's what that is I bet that's supposed to hammer down in there that's why I was having issues with deck belts so I'm gonna work on that a little bit I'll see what I can hammer if I can get it back down in there and if I can then we should be good this is like almost like a secondary tensioner but you can see it's kind of bent over and it was the belt was a little slack and this is the correct belt for it even the other 113 inch belt was a little bit shorter than this so let me see if i can beat this or knock this back into that hole right there and maybe well, that'll actually solve some of our problems all right guys i put a battery in it as well and then i also put this bracket on for the belt keeper put the belt back on and i think we're okay i'm going to start this up remember i'm going to put the original engine back in this or may at least make it look original so we're not done with this yet although as is i could probably sell this for about 600 dollars. it's a little bit down on power though and at 14 and a half it's a little tired But it will live on in another project. Let me get let me get the thing started, and I'll we'll come out here and test this thing out.
So that's an improvement. Um, you can probably hear that the belt was not turning very fast whenever I had it on the lower settings. I don't know exactly why. I wonder if I could work on that um, pulley a little bit more. Seems like it's doing better though than it was. I don't know exactly what I could do to get it to go back anymore, but it does, like I said, it does run and cut fine. Uh, it makes me, makes me wonder if I do even want to go through the process of changing the engine on it. Like I said, it does run, I mean, it runs and cuts fine as it is. Probably might run, run around the yard a little bit, see if it will hold up, because really the way that I've got it adjusted, it shouldn't be shouldn't be cutting grass much lower than this anyways um, not quite sure exactly where the holdup is to where the belt is only working that good but it's funny though so I knocked that pulley back into place a little bit and the belt tension seems good mm -hmm. almost it's almost like that bracket where the secondary tensioner is has is like bent down almost so it's like if I could or bent up it's almost like if I could bend it down I'll be okay let me lower the deck and see what I'm what I'm trying to tell y'all because it's hard to explain in words so this pulley right here you see where it's just kind of um, pushed over a little bit almost like almost like it has doesn't have enough tension on it but I have pushed it as far as I can it looks like it's tried to come back over a little bit I wonder if I can uh, I wonder if I can just bang on that a little bit and see if I can get it to work a little bit better get it in a, a little bit more a little bit straighter I guess I don't know exactly how to s describe it Sh a little bit straighter and a little bit bent further down because it like it literally just needs it's like if the belt was a quarter inch shorter it'd be working great but it's not so I'm gonna knock this deck around a little bit more and see what I can do with it I think I'll be able to get something going with it here uh, fairly that'll work well so we'll see what we can do because i would love 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 to get this to where it's operating exactly like it's supposed to obviously instead of being a little lackadaisical and only cut on the higher settings in its current state all right guys pardon the sun but we've got i keep going back and forth on this thing keep going back and forth one thing i'm thinking that I think the thing that's causing the issue and if I can get down here and show you all that would be ideal I don't know if I can so it's the secondary tensioner here so what's happening is it'll get good tension and then the secondary tensioner comes back and like pops out of that hole that I tried to drive it down into now 
when that happens, it loses slack on the belt and won't engage very well. So, I think what I need to do, how much extra? So I have some extra here on the threads of this um, bolt, which means I have about that much maybe to play with. And what I could possibly do is get a couple of spacers and lengthen lengthen that a little bit to where it's sitting a little bit further down and it will go into the hole. I'll have the deck off, I'll show you better. But get into this hole back here that you see it kind of has slid out of. I believe if I can get it to where it'll stay in that hole right there and if I need to put some sort of washer, big washer or something underneath this so that it stays right there instead of trying to push back I think that's going to solve my issues so it's um it's a little bit too late for me to to start on doing any more of this tonight because I gotta do some yard work but um I guess it'll be about two days I'll rejoin y'all in the next clip I put the old belt back on because I wanted to test that out not and not burn the belt up. I think I'm, I don't think I'm gonna burn the belt up anymore after I fix it or after I affix it, whatever you want to say here to that hole there, right there. I think I'm gonna be okay because my issue is with the tension, it's like it's counteracting each other. So, like the tension of the belt comes on, and then the tension of this pulley doesn't. So, that's where my problems lie. If I can just keep that as kind of a fixed arm or a fixed pulley or something along those lines, I'll probably be better. I do notice that spring is a little bit stretched, but I think my, my issue basically lies with... Because that doesn't really... I don't see the purpose of this, honestly. Because this spring here for the blading gauge can act as like a tension... Um, tension adjustment and it's got a return spring right there too so that's where I'm kind of at on this I'm going to um, take the deck back off try and aff affix this bolt to where it will keep that pulley where it is currently and I think when I put the new belt on then I'll be in business and then we can pursue the option of potentially putting something um, putting this other engine on to this mower. So that's where I'm at. And I'll rejoin you in a couple days and hopefully we'll have this thing cutting like it should or at least cutting a lot better than it currently is. So once I get that kind of figured out, I think that this thing's going to be right and we'll get that, we'll get, like I said, that engine in here that is more closely related to the 21 horse. We'll save the 14 and a half for something around here. There's tons of frames that I can put this on. So that's where we're at. Catch you in a couple days. Well, let me show you what I ended up doing on this deck. And I hope it doesn't come back to bite me. Basically, I had an idea to just basically fix the tensioner or affix it, whatever you want to call it. And what I did is I just kind of re um, figured out some hardware to get it to where the bolt will go through that hole and then this is like a got like a washer or like a little collar on the bottom there and it comes up through that hole I spaced it out good enough to where it just uh, comes up to the arm and then I just put the bolt through it and called it a day quite honestly we're gonna see if this works if I can have this fixed pulley here because really, I don't understand the purpose of this secondary tensioner. Because what it's doing is it's counteracting this tensioner. So whenever I engage the blades here, it decides it wants to, you know, push this forward so you lose your tension whenever you gain it right here. And that's what's causing my issues. The belt's loose whenever the um, blades are off even with this tensioner as far back in the lock position. So I'm just going to try this. I hope it works. Um, I'll put it back on. 
the old belt is too far gone to even test out so we're just going to chuck it and hope that i don't mess up the new belt on this thing any more than i already have i have kind of put a little scoring on it unfortunately but i think we're i think we're going to be good now so let me get it back on the mower and see we'll test it and see if there are any ill effects from it uh, maybe while i have it out i might as well go ahead and sharpen the blades on it as well because the blades are getting kind of dull i think we can manage one more sharpen out of these um, and be good so i'll join y'all again when i have the deck back on the mower all right guys i'm about to pull it out but i wanted to show y'all what we ended up with when i fixed the pulley whenever i disengage the blades i mean it seems like there's enough play in the belt to where we're not going to have any issues so i'm hoping that is the case and we'll see i mean look at how much i mean i could slip it off if i wanted to right there so i think we're going to be okay i know that i know these mtds kind of like a decent amount of slack that's why they have all them pulley um, guides that are so tight on the pulleys so that you don't have the or so that the belt stays on unlike the craftsman's you can get away with them a little bit better but you got to have a more exact length belt too let me throw let me get this thing ready here Only time t will tell, but I think we got it. Um, it's engaging and disengaging very well. I fixed that other pulley, and it doesn't seem like it's having any ill effect on um, any issues whenever you have the blades off. Whenever you have the blades on, it's strong in all five positions, which is what I was looking for. So that's excellent. I think I'm going to blow off the driveway and do a couple of things, um, and then... I'm going to figure out if I can find all the parts that I need to take this 14 and a half off and put a 21 back on it. And that way, I, quite honestly, this, this engine right here probably has almost as, as much power as the 21. But if I can make it look stock and everything, I'll get be able to get top dollar for it. It ain't in the best cosmetic condition, but it's... It's pretty darn good for what it is. It's definitely worth saving. I want to see if I can get those lenses a little bit nicer. But that's really the only tear. I mean, it's got a couple of small cosmetic things. But it's really, this is really the only terrible cosmetic issue that I have on it. 
so far. Y'all have seen a ton of videos on this uh, already. And if you go back to the very, very beginning when I first got this tractor, I was borderline on whether or not I was even going to try and save it. Now that it's been over two years and this has been off and on mine, um, it went, I tr like I said, I traded another guy for a AYP Craftsman for this back just because we were having drive belt problems and stuff. We've come a long way on this thing, so I'm very pleased, and I'll be really pleased when we make it back original to the 21 horsepower deal, because it'll look really, it'll, it'll bring top dollar at that point, and, um, which may be $700 for this, but we'll see. Y'all seen me done a, do a ton of engine swaps before, so I think I'm going to skimp out on that on this video, or skip out on it. And we'll get to the point, I will show you what I'm starting with, and then I'll show you what I end up with with the 21. Stay tuned. Well, here everything is, I suppose. Let me show you all some stuff. And then we'll, uh, now I'll just put it all together, quite honestly. Y'all see me put so many of these brig singles together on this channel before. So we won't, I'll spare you all that. Pretty sure I got all the parts I need here. The one big thing I was miss not missing, but um, looking for was this offset flywheel. Uh, some of, a lot of the newer model engines have uh, the, I guess it's like a steel and an aluminum, a difference between a steel shaft and an aluminum shaft. You see this crankshaft has got you see where the indent is for the flywheel key at the top and then where the indent is for the crank pulley at the bottom they're all set about 90 degrees now if I go over to another mower I think I had one in the shed but they have a from what I understand they have a steel crank um, shaft flywheel key for the crankshaft that go on these flywheels now what happens is those have um, the flywheel key straight up and down aligned with this crankshaft pulley keyway. That's how you can tell the difference. One of them's 90, 90 degrees off. And I didn't know if I had a flywheel that would work for this, and I do. It's this one right here. And you can see where the flywheel key is I took this off of a running engine that blew up well it was running at the time and then blew up so I do know that it has the offset let me see let me go and get the other flywheel and show you the difference between the two here's that comparison guys the old style here you can see we're well, not the old style but you see them on the older mowers let's just put it that way looks like this so you've got your keyway I basically lined up the two keyways right here if you can see and you've got your keyway here and then your um, magnets kind of offset like this and then here it's turned 90 degrees so if you try and put this flywheel on an engine that needs this flywheel it's going to like try and kick back and backfire and all that stuff and like i said this is the one where the keyways are straight aligned with each other this one's the one that's got the 90 degrees off, all right? So that's what's going on. This flywheel will be going on this engine. I've got a head right there. The coil or um, stator is in here. I've got a valve cover. Here's a, you know, intake pipe. I need to find an O-ring for it. And various other items that I have enough to put oh there's a good intake pipe actually boom various other items to put this back together this engine ran just fine it kept blowing head gaskets and i found out after the fact that it was because it was shearing flywheel keys and i don't know if it's because i had the wrong flywheel or i don't know if it's because i had a different flywheel key on it that needs to then needs to be on it or what but um 
that's what happened to this one. So, um, well, see that that flywheel key is a little bit deeper than the other, so I might have to find something different to work with that one in order to put on this mower. That might have been my issue originally. Either way, we'll find out. I do want to get. Uh, I believe that fly will work. We're going to find out. So I'm going to basically put all this together off camera. I'll get it on the mower and then we'll get it going. Uh, hopefully. So that's, like I said, that's the plan. We'll see what happens with it. All right. Let me get to work. I think I'm done for the day today because I'm about whooped. And I'll catch y'all on the next day here, the next clip. All right, y'all. So plans change. I wanted to do the whole engine deal but I have the opportunity to basically sell it as is for 600 bucks and um, at this point in time I think y'all would agree with me I'm gonna take the cash over um, the potential of not even making any money by just making it original again so this engine runs and runs fine what I've needed to do to it though is I think the head has a little bit of an issue like the little tabs where the um, push rods go through because it was wearing this aluminum push rod down for the intake. So what I've done, I'm not going to put that push rod in anything else, is put a metal one in there. I've bent this tab back a little bit because I think it may have gotten damaged because this one actually threw an intake rod a while back on the original mower it was on. And uh, I see a little bit of grass under here too. I don't know if I've got a little bit of a nest trying to build but either way I've put I've already gapped it I've put this um, metal push rod in for the intake so I shouldn't have any problems after that this mower like I said I wish I, I would have loved to have put all of that on it but guys it's like end of August when I'm filming this and any riding mower sale or any mower sale in general I can get before the cooler weather hits and the mowing season gets coming to an end is um, great so I'm gonna take the money and run on this one um, I'm gonna all I gotta do left is put this valve cover back on I'm gonna go test mow this thing and uh, hopefully that's all I need to do to it deck seems like it's working good I'll give you all a follow-up video at the end of this just to make sure that everything is good on it, number one, to affirm that everything is good on it for y'all for the video purpose, and just to generally wrap this video up to give it a final look for y'all, all right? So let me do that, and I'll be right back. All right, well, I have finished this thing. Um, like I said, I kept the 14 and a half on it because I basically already had a buyer. I had like two people wanting to buy this thing already before I even had it done. It's the end of August. It's not supposed to sell. I'm not supposed to sell stuff that quick. But um, so 14 and a half stays on. It. I mean, it does a good job. I just cut the backyard with it. It kind of may struggle a little bit in thick grass. I think this engine is a little bit tired. But I mean, if you look at the mower, the mower itself is a little bit tired too. So it's not like. I mean, it kind of fits the mower. Um, but still, like I said, being with the 46 inch deck. It still, it still brings decent money. I'm going to get $600 for it tomorrow. I'm fairly sure I have a customer who actually also owns that Cub Cadet Ultima that needs a spindle and uh, that I've worked on one uh, time before. And I think I might have sold her a push mower that I actually had to do some repairs for as well. But that's, that's beside the point. So basically this is all that I'm going to be doing with this. Remember, I've put quite a few parts on this thing a lot of the stuff to get it just back right again like this deck guard but both deck belts and a drive belt and um, quite a few other parts I bought the I bought those engine covers and stuff or that air filter cover um, fix the drive belt Sharpen the blades on it. The blades probably could use replacing before long. They still cut good though. Um, so, what we did is a couple of times here. Y'all have seen this mower on and off the channel for about, I don't know, two years now. 
Uh, when I first got this mower, it was sitting in, a, in somebody's backyard. I got in a lot of five mowers, and it was not the prettiest looking thing in the world. It had been severely neglected. I believe the original engine had a com bad compression release. Even though I put a new compression release in it, I think that compression release was bad, which led, led me to believe that the engine itself was bad, or something in the engine was binding up which is where that 14 and a half came from. Then I found out that engine was actually okay. So anyways, so that 14 and a half is on it now. That's the way I sold it originally, but I was an idiot and used aftermarket belts. So the first person that I sold it to, um, he was having an issue with it not stopping and it would just keep driving, you know, um, especially after you started, started it up, it would just keep driving. And, uh, after doing on and off repairs about a, for about a year, just kind of on the drive belt setup, um, I, I just basically swapped this mower for a Craftsman mower, uh, like an LT1000, and I haven't heard from him in like three months, so I think that thing's doing good, and uh, which is nice. Anyways, that's how we've gotten to this point. So when I got this mower back in, I'm like, hmm, what do I want to do with it? It's nice enough to save but we've got to do a lot of stuff to it. The deck belt was kind of grooved out because of the way that the tensioner pulleys and everything, you have that secondary tensioner on the deck. And so far, I've looked at the belts, they weren't, they're wearing like they're supposed to, which is not really wearing at all. Um, so I don't really know the purpose of that secondary tensioner on these 46 inch decks. If anybody out there does, please leave it in the comment section. I would love to know. I don't see, I see more harm than good from it, honestly, um, because I, you know, fix that tensioner to where it would stay in the same spot instead of moving back and forth. And the deck is operating like it should. It's engaging and disengaging the blades like it should. The belt's nice and tight at all levels. And then the drive belt fix that I did as well with the little dome around it so that the belt didn't slip off because I was a dummy and decided to cut off the uh, parking brake. When I originally had that, seems to be working fine too. Like I said, I just cut my whole backyard with it. So I think, aside from me wanting to put another engine on it, we're we have done a really good job with this mower. Uh, if there's anything y'all see that I may have missed or anything that y'all have done differently, feel free to leave it in the comments section. I'm not, I'm not the end all be all by any means. I don't claim to be right about anything, honestly, but I um, just try and help y'all out, really. If y'all see stuff that you don't like me doing, then you don't have to do it. <laughs> but hopefully you, like, you see a lot of stuff that I do do that helps y'all out. That's the mission of the channel here. Um, so we're done with this thing. I think it's going to sail off into the sunset, another late summer sail. We've, I've been cranking it here in the month of August. I think I should take, I've got five riders out of here, which has been fantastic because I was getting a little nervous because y'all see what my backyard looks like. We're going to get that cleaned up in the fall and I'll have videos on that, cleaning it up and getting things ready throughout the off season. Anyways, I appreciate y'all watching this video. If you have any questions about this video, um, or anything you see on the channel, feel free to reach out to me, ellis at ellismowers.com or at ellismowers09 on Instagram and Facebook. And remember, the one thing about these MTD mowers, especially these newer ones, or anything associated with the Vera drives, use OEM spec belts. Don't get the cheap aftermarket stuff. That will burn you. It has burned me so many times. I hope y'all enjoyed seeing this mower yet again on the channel, and I really hope y'all have enjoyed watching it go from a two-year process of me finally getting rid of it, hopefully for good. Anyways, unless it needs to be serviced for some reason. I probably just jinxed myself there. But e either way, thanks for all the support as always, and I'll catch y'all in the next video. See you then.